Let us discuss one of the topics in which concept based MCQs are asked and uh, they are quite difficult to answer because it's uh, kind of maths involved here and I see students fumble in these concepts. So we will discuss about moles, milliequivalents, osmoles and osmotic pressure. What is moles? Moles is basically gram molecular weight of substance. That means what is the molecular weight of the substance that is equal to 1 mole. Okay. So suppose if we consider NaCl, right? Molecular weight of sodium is 23 and molecular weight of chloride is 35.5. So if we consider only maybe sodium, then this is 1 mole. If for chloride it is 35.5. Okay. But 1 mole of NaCl will be how much? It will be? 23 plus 35.5 that is the we are adding the molecular weights of sodium and chloride so it will come to 58.5 so this is the gram molecular weight of NaCl and it is equivalent to one mole of NaCl and uh, remember that uh, one mole of any substance contains 6 into 10 to the power 23 molecules of that substance that is the Avogadro's number. Coming to next concept that is the equivalence. What is equivalence? Well, equivalent is used only for ionized substance. Okay. So, suppose the weight is given for sodium it is 23 and for calcium it is 40. We said it is mole. Right. Now, to calculate the equivalent weight weight not milliequivalence we are not talking that equivalent weight of each of these we have to divide the mole one mole of ionized substance we have to divide it with valency of that substance so if we calculate the uh, equivalent weight for calcium how much it will be 40 divided by 2 is equal to 20 and for sodium it will be same 23 because the valency is one only okay so that is equivalent weight but remember, calculation of milliequivalents, that how many milliequivalents are there, it is different. We have to multiply it with the moles. See, because equivalent weight is half, isn't it? So, if we see how much concentration in milliequivalents per liter is there, because the molecular weight is half, the, the concentration will be doubled, isn't it? Fine. Let's go to next concept, that is the normality. What is normality? Normality is basically number of gram molecular weight in 1 liter. So, if we have to prepare a solution of 1 N NaCl, that means we have to add 58.5 grams in 1 liter. So, that will become 1 N NaCl, right? And uh, let us see another example of that. How much HCl to be added to create 2N solution of HCl, right? So, 2N solution, that means we need... 2 gram molecular weight in 1 liter or 2 moles of the substance in 1 liter. So, 1 mole is how much? 1 mole will be, these are the molecular weights given, it will be 35.5 that is the HCl plus 1 for hydrogen. So, it will give you 36.5 grams, right? So, we have to double it and uh, how much it will be? to So, 73 grams of the substance when added in 1 liter of the solution will give you 2N solution of HCl. Fine. Let's move on to next concept that is the osmoles. What is osmoles? Osmoles is number of moles, right, into number of freely moving particles released after dissociation. So, 1 mole of NaCl, 1 mole of NaCl. Now, if NaCl dissociates, how many particles will be there? It will be sodium and chloride. Okay, so two particles, one mole of NaCl is releasing two particles. So, that will be two osmoles. One mole of NaCl will be equal to two osmoles or one millimole of NaCl will be equal to two milliosmoles. We should know about this moles and milliosmoles because when we are talking in physiological conditions, Generally, we will see that the concentration of various substances is in milli uh, moles and uh, we are talking about osmolarity in terms of milli osmoles. Okay. So, uh, read the question carefully when you are trying to understand it, uh, moles, milli moles, what it is written. 
So let us see another question. Calculate number of osmoles for 1 mole of NaCl and CaCl2. So uh, I mean these are two different things right. So if we calculate for NaCl it will be 2 osmoles and for CaCl2 see CaCl2 will dissociate into 3 particles. So it will cause 3 osmoles. So it is very simple the calculation of the osmoles. Then what is osmolarity? Osmolarity is number of osmoles per liter of solution. Then there is another term that is osmolality. Osmolality is number of osmoles per kg of solvent. Two terms are there, right? Osmolarity. So osmolarity is liter. I remember it is like uh, how verbally it is being pronounced. Larity, liter. Both have RR in, term, in uh, their pronunciation. Per liter of solution. That means it is taking into account the solvents also. And solute also. Solution has solvent and solute. So it is taking into account both. And osmolality is osmose per kg of only solvent. Okay. And... Uh, this is much better to use osmolality because osmolarity also depends on the temperature. When temperature changes, actually the osmolarity changes because it is taking into consideration solute also. So the movement of the particles differs, right? So osmolality is the one which is used. So why it is important to know the concept of osmolarity? Because more the osmolarity more the solution will draw in water, right? So this concept we have discussed in osmosis also. That how osmolarity is important for passive diffusion of water. So suppose this is A and this is B and A side is having certain solutes which are not able to cross the membrane and the membrane is only permeable to water. So that is very important that membrane should be permeable only to water Solute should not be able to cross the membrane and reach to the other side. So water will uh, come from B to A and this side, A side will rise in level. So this solute particle which is not able to cross the membrane, these are known as effective osmoles. On the other hand, suppose there was a solute which is able to cross the membrane. So what will happen that uh, this it is going to cross and it will equally distribute on both the sides. Okay. In that case, there is no net movement of water because it is solute which will uh, equally distribute on both the sides. Right. So, this solute is known as ineffective osmoles. Examples are glucose, urea in body. Right. Now, coming to how to calculate how much is the osmolarity. I am talking that okay, there is some solute particles there. But if we have to calculate how much is the osmolarity, how to do that? Well, there are two mechanisms to do that, right? One is by freezing point depression. One is by freezing point depression. And this is the one which is most accurate, okay? Freezing point depression because one osmol of the solute actually causes the depression of the solution by 1.86 degree Celsius. So remember this one osmol causes the depression of freezing point of the solution by 1.86 degree Celsius. So uh, by noting down that uh, how much uh, depression in the freezing point has occurred we can actually determine the osmoles. Then there is another uh, method the formula is there and the formula states uh, that twice of sodium and potassium in milliequivalents per liter that is the concentration then 1 by 18 of glucose concentration in milligram per deciliter plus 1 by 2.8 or uh, 0 0.36 multiplied by the concentration of blood urea nitrogen. So three things have been taken into account there is ions there is glucose and there is blood urea nitrogen when we are determining osmolality using this formula. And uh, remember that here when we are using this formula, the units which I have said is milliequivalents per liter, glucose it is milligram per deciliter and blood urea nitrogen it is milligram per deciliter. 
but suppose if the units given are in millimoles per liter then you just have to add all the values so if all the units are given in millimoles per liter then you just add all the values and you will get the osmolality in milliosmoles per liter and how it is that millimoles get converted to milliosmoles simple you see here as i told you here it is already put twice because this formula why we are putting twice because we are taking into consideration the anions also isn't it one sodium will have one associated anion also like chloride so we are taking the concentration of cations and doubling it so that anions are also taken into consideration so automatically that uh, millimoles is getting doubled isn't it and uh, for glucose in blood urea nitrogen valency is what valency is one only right so the osmoles or the milliosmoles will be equal to the millimoles so that is why you just add the values of these but one thing you remember here that uh, the osmolality which is determined by these two mechanisms uh, that is by the formula and by the freezing point depression it differs the osmolality determined by freezing point depression is more right it is actually greater than 10 milliosmoles per liter approximately 10 milliosmoles per liter difference is there but if the difference is much more that means osmolality determined by freezing point depression say suppose is uh, uh, 320 okay and that determined by osmolality formula is uh, suppose uh, 290 so the difference is much more that means there is some external substance apart from this sodium potassium glucose and blood urea nitrogen which is causing difference in osmolality okay and this difference between the osmolality determined by freezing point determination and freezing point depression and osmolality formula it is known as osmolal gap so this helps us to determine that if there is any presence of any foreign substance coming to next concept osmotic pressure what is osmotic pressure osmotic pressure is calculated by means of a formula nrt by v where n is the number of the osmoles right v is the volume of the solution so this is basically the concentration of the osmoles and r is the gas constant and t is the absolute temperature okay and this will give you the osmotic pressure now no need to remember these uh, values of gas constant temperature and actual calculation of everything but if we simplify this right if we take this concentration value as 1 osmoles per liter and uh, because these two are constants in a physiological condition so what happens that the osmotic pressure which is determined comes to 19300 mm mercury so 1 osmole per liter exerts an osmotic pressure of 19300 mm mercury or we can say 1 milliosmoles per liter we are always talking in milliosmoles because in body the osmolarity is in milliosmoles not in osmoles right 1 milliosmoles per liter exerts a pressure of 19.3 mm mercury so if we know what is the concentration of the solutes right the osmoles if we know we can determine the osmotic pressure how much osmotic pressure needs to be exerted to stop the osmosis so simply we will put in this formula milliosmoles per liter into 19.3 and what is this reflection coefficient we have to multiply this by reflection coefficient because if you see that before i have talked about effective osmoles and ineffective osmoles that means if there is a osmol which can cross both sides isn't it so initially it may be that um, it may exert some osmotic pressure but um, it will cross both sides at equilibrium in that case the osmotic pressure exerted will be zero isn't it so reflection coefficient is for determining that how much percentage of the solute can cross the membrane so if it is not able to cross the membrane at all then this reflection coefficient will be 1 and if it is uh, crossing the membrane freely right so then the reflection coefficient will become zero and the osmotic pressure exerted by such ineffective osmol will be zero let's come to next part that is tonicity of the solution tonicity of the solution so normal plasma tonicity is 280 to 290 milliosmoles per liter and when we consider another solution we have to see 
what is its osmolarity with respect to the plasma osmolarity okay so isotonic solution is something which has the same tonicity as that of the plasma hypertonic solution will have the osmolarity more than that of the plasma so maybe 300 milli osmoles per liter that is a hypertonic solution and hypotonic solution is something which is having osmolarity less than that of the plasma osmolarity so these terms isotonic hypertonic and hypotonic are always used with respect to tonicity of the plasma and what are the examples of such kind of solution well 0.9 percent nacl is a isotonic uh, solution and one good exercise will be to calculate uh, the milliosmos from the 0.9 percent solution isn't it and then there is 5 percent glucose actually this 5 percent uh, glucose if we see the osmolarity then it is similar to that of the osmolarity however glucose actually can be metabolized and after metabolism what happens that only water will be left isn't it so when this solution is kept separate from the body okay then the tonicity is same so it is isoosmotic but once it is injected in the body what happens that this glucose is metabolized okay so the physiological effect is not uh, like injection of a isotonic substance instead it behaves like a hypotonic solution okay hypotonic solution because glucose will be metabolized so please try to understand the difference between isoosmotic and isotonic 0.9 percent nacl is both isoosmotic and isotonic to that of the plasma but 5 percent glucose is isoosmotic but it is hypotonic okay with this now let us solve certain mcqs for these concepts so first mcq is Contribution of plasma proteins to osmolarity, osmolality is less because. So, there is high concentration of proteins. That is correct. High concentration of proteins is there. But contribution to osmolality is less. Why so? Because, you see, the molecular weight of proteins is much higher. Very high. We were talking about ions and all, right? Whose molecular weight is much less. Plasma protein molecular weight is much higher. So, with the same grams, if we talk about, right, with the same uh, weight or grams, the number of osmoles which will be there will be very less. Understanding. For the same weight of the ions, the number of osmoles will be very high. So, what is the answer in this case? So, first obviously, it is high molecular weight. Okay, high molecular weight uh, is there. So, these two we rule out, A and C. What about B and D? The molar concentration. The molar concentration actually is low. Okay. So, molar concentration is low and hence osmoles will also be low. So, this is the correct answer. Low molar concentration and high molecular weight. Coming to next question. Calculate osmolarity of a solution containing 20 millimoles of NaCl, 5 millimoles of KCl and 5 millimoles of CaCl2. So, it is simple. What you have to do is calculate the osmoles of this. So, 20 millimoles of NaCl, how many osmoles will be there? How to calculate the osmoles? You have to multiply it with the, the number of particles which it can release, isn't it? So, NaCl can release 2 particles. So, 20 into 2, it will be 40 milliosmoles, okay? Then, 5 millimoles KCl, again 2 particles it can release. So, it will be 10 milliosmoles, right? And what about uh, CaCl2? It can release 3 particles. So, it will be 5, 3 is a 15. So, it will be 15 milliosmoles. And what will be the answer of this? 65 milliosmoles are present in this solution. Okay, fine. Let's move on to next question. What will happen to red cell volume when they are placed in a solution of 140 millimoles NaCl plus 20 millimoles of urea? And this red cell volume, if you see, the osmolarity is 280 milliosmoles per uh, liter. So, uh, red cell is having an osmolarity of 280 milliosmoles per liter. And here we have 140 millimoles of NaCl, right? And 
plus 20 millimoles of urea. So what is the osmolarity of this solution? See 140 millimoles of NaCl is equivalent to 280 milliosmoles of NaCl, right? So actually this becomes same but it has 20 millimoles extra urea also. So actually this solution is hyperosmotic, hyperosmotic. What about tonicity? So always solve this way. First label it as hyperosmotic and then find out whether it is, uh, is um, what is its tonicity with respect to the cell or plasma, right? So it is hypertonic, fine. So where will the water go? It Water moves from low solute concentration to high solute concentration. So water will move from RBC to that of the solution. So initially, cells will shrink initially they will shrink right and then what will happen this 20 milliosmoles actually of this urea it will equilibrate because urea can cross the cell membrane okay so if urea crosses what will happen this it will be 10 millimoles here and 10 millimoles here so it will be 20 290 and 290 milliosmoles so because it takes some time okay to equilibrate that is why I said that initially they will shrink but what will be the end result see because the osmolarity both sides it is same since the solute can cross so ultimately there will be no change in cell volume we can't say that they will swell understanding because the osmolarity is same on both sides if it was like uh, 280 here and whole urea it, it was becoming uh, coming inside right then this osmolarity becomes more and more water will move but if the osmolarity on both sides is same then there will be no net movement of the water so even if initially they shrink okay maybe but later on they will come back to their original volume and they will not swell. So basically the answer is no change in cell volume. Okay, let's come to next question. Osmolality determined by freezing point depression and by formula were respectively this. So this 320 is by freezing point depression and 290 milliosmoles is by the formula. So what could not be the cause of this? See not be the cause we are asking so it is simple that the answer cannot be hyperglycemia why because we have already included glucose in the formula right glucose ions and uh, blood urea nitrogen is already in the formula so if uh, glucose concentration rises it will reflect as rise in osmolarity by the formula as well and and by the uh, freezing point depression as well isn't it so there will not be much difference between the two it will be uh, coming okay only but the other substances that is these substances they are not included in the formula so if they are not included in the formula that means they will actually cause the freezing point depression much more than what is expected so the osmolality determined by this will be higher okay and uh, these are not reflected in the formula so the difference between the two methods will be more.